Okay, so today I'm going to be taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy A13 released just two months ago. And I do have thoughts as to whether this is actually an upgrade over the older A12. So if you're interested, stick around for this video and don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on future videos. So let's start by talking about the design of the Galaxy A13. Up front, there's a large 6.6 inch full HD display with a standard 60 hertz refresh rate. The display is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5, so it should have a bit of durability against scratches. And the resolution is a step up from the 720p display found on the Galaxy A12. It's not a bad display and maximum brightness is just shy of about 600 nits on auto. And speaking of auto brightness, this can be very temperamental on the A13 due to the lack of an actual light sensor up front and the 60 hertz refresh rate is to be expected at this budget price point. Up top, there's a dewdrop notch which houses the 8 megapixel f2.2 selfie camera. This is the same as found on the older A12 and selfies are pretty comparable between the two. Not bad detail, but portrait mode can struggle with tricky hair situations like with mine, but that's pretty standard at this price point. You also get the same option to widen the view on the selfie camera as well, just to fit a little bit more in the frame. A quick video sample coming from the selfie camera of the Galaxy A13, topping out at 1080p at 30fps. Of course, no stabilisation or anything like that. Audio quality is pretty good, and to be fair, the pitch quality isn't too bad either. There's also a chin at the bottom again, standard for this budget segment. The bottom of the phone, you have a speaker grill, USB-C port, microphone and headphone jack. The top is clear aside from another microphone and the right houses your volume buttons and power button with integrated fingerprint scanner, which is very responsive. And on the left is just your SIM tray, which can house two SIM cards or one SIM and a micro SD card. The body is made of a single piece of plastic that wraps cleanly around the outside of the phone. And up in the top left corner, you have your quad camera system in the same design as what is found on other A-series devices. This consists of a 50 megapixel f1.8 primary camera with no OIS, a 5 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide with a 123 degree field of view, and your usual macro and depth cameras. Samsung seems to have moved away from the older 48 megapixel sensors that were on some of their older devices in favour of these newer 50 megapixel sensors that do the same quad pixel binning. Other manufacturers such as Xiaomi and Realme do seem to have taken the same steps going forward as well. The sensor does the same 4-in-1 capture to produce brighter 12.5 megapixel images. The camera app is very basic with very few other shooting modes and there's also no night mode on the A13 either. So nighttime photography is going to be a bit tricky. Daytime photos are pretty good for this budget segment. There's good detail and the usual colour pop of Samsung phones is present. And thanks to the depth sensor, portrait mode does a pretty decent job blur in the background as well. Ultra wide photos seem to retain the same colour profile but these are much less detailed with certain areas coming out very soft, especially patches of the grass on this photo. But at five megapixels, these were never going to be great. So video coming from the main camera of the Galaxy A13, also topping out at 1080p at 30fps. Unfortunately, you can't even do 1080p at 60fps on the A13. And that isn't a limitation that Samsung have put on this camera system themselves. That is unfortunately the limitation of the Exynos 850 inside the A13. 30fps video is also supported on the wide angle camera as well, but of course at a much lower resolution. As for software, you get Android 12 on the A13 on top of Samsung's slightly stripped back One UI Core version 4.1. And you can get the A13 in either 3, 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM with either 32, 64 or 128 gigabytes of expandable storage. And personally, One UI isn't really for me after using so many Motorola devices that use a more stock Android skin. Um, I do actually prefer that over One UI on the Samsung devices. And as for colours, you get black, white, peach and blue. You also get a large 5000 mAh battery on the Galaxy A13, which is unchanged from the A12, as well as the rather mediocre 15 watt charging support. It only gets you around 25% in half an hour and a full charge taken around 2 hours and 20 minutes. 
And lastly, performance is taken care of by the same Exynos 850 processor found inside the A12 2021. Now, while day-to-day -day performance is absolutely fine, switching between apps and doing a bit of camera use and social media, this is definitely far from the best performance at this price. This chip sadly falls behind almost every other smartphone at this price in terms of every aspect of its performance. So if you're an avid gamer, this definitely isn't going to be the phone for you, and I would highly suggest looking elsewhere. It is, however, built on a pretty efficient 8 nanometer fabrication, which does help the A13 return excellent battery life, up to two or four days depending on usage, and the only benefit from the 60 hertz display will help its battery endurance too. So that's my look at the Samsung Galaxy A13, and for me, it doesn't really seem like much of an upgrade over the A12 2021. It uses the same in-house Exynos 850 processor, so there's no improvement in performance. And as for the camera, although it uses a newer 50 megapixel sensor over the 48 megapixel found on the A12, results are pretty similar, and the 5 megapixel ultrawide is unchanged from the A12 as well. So if you have an A12 2021, I'd stick with that one, but unfortunately, almost every other brand at this price offers better value and definitely better performance. So I would probably look elsewhere if you're not stuck on a Samsung device. I'm not saying that every aspect of these other phones is going to be better than the A13, but definitely in performance. And this is an area that I definitely think Samsung could have done a lot better in. But let me know in the comments what you think of the Galaxy A13. Is it something that you're using at the moment? There is, of course, a 5G model, which does heavily improve on performance. So let me know in the comments if that is a smartphone that you'd like me to take a look at. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe down below and check out my other Samsung videos that you can find up here. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.